today's topic is anxiety. Um, I'm Dr. Adila, Assistant uh, Professor, Department of Psychiatry, Slims, Lahore. Uh, now, what is anxiety? Now, here we have it's a feeling of worry, nervousness, or uh, unease so about something with an uncertain outcome. Like we are just worried because something might go wrong somewhere. So now that is anxiety. Now uh, here we have some uh, actual definition that is a chronic condition characterized by an excessive and persistent sense of apprehension with physical symptoms such as sweating, palpitation, and feeling of stress. Now usually uh, when we have anxiety, we usually the first thing we feel is a feeling of stress and a feeling of uh, insecurity and a feeling of uh, um, coldness within inside. Basically, uh, at that time, it's difficult to think and it's also difficult to, you know, process things that are that are there in front of us, but still we go under um, a trance or, or just a freeze. So it's like, you know, we, we are just so much apprehensive that otherwise, which could have been a normal situation, because of the apprehension and fear could, be, could become worse. So that ha that's how dangerous anxiety can be. So it's usually associated with sweating, palpitations and feeling of distress, basically. So this is the classification of anxiety disorder, panic disorders, generalized anxiety disorders, phobic disorders, OCDs, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other related disorders. Now, what is generalized anxiety? Now, why it's called generalized? Let's go into that. Now, GAD is usually characterized by a chronic, unrealistic, and excessive anxiety or worry that is uncomfortable to the point of interfering with daily life. Like, uh, as you can see, it is not just one day or two days. It's going to be for a period of time, like at least six months or more. So imagine a person being in that state of mind for uh, six months or more, which is going to be deteriorating in many aspects because we'll be seeing in, seeing the uh, eto etiopathological um, origin of anxiety in which there is a huge role for psychoneuroimmunology. So we'll be going into that soon. A person with GAD, that is generalized anxiety disorder, worries excessively and feels highly anxious at least 50% of the time for six months or more. So usually it is uh, for a period of time. It's just not for few months. It's just six months or more. So excessive worry or anxiety about multiple issues which lingers for six months can be called as GAD. So it lingers for six months and it is not like, you know, going to subside anytime soon. So it's going to be more than, maybe more than six months. So... As with many mental health conditions, the exact cause of GAD is not fully understood, but it may include genetics as well as other risk factors. Now, these factors may increase the risk of developing generalized anxiety disorder. Number one would be always, now let's have a biopsychosocial approach. On the biological side, it's going to be genetics and being born as a female itself. But uh, even though uh, women are anxious or uh, they are prone for anxiety, uh, they, they tend to have this anticipatory anxiety. Like uh, we can say the defense of anticipation works a lot in women and that could lead to always, you know, futuristic thoughts and, you know, futuristic um, problems. Like uh, she, she has that tendency to foresee things. So, you know, that itself could lead to that when becomes pathological is going to be become GAD. So genetics, generalized anxiety disorder may run in the family. And personality disorder, here we have uh, different sorts of personality. 
especially there's something called anxious personality and uh, it is like uh, the temperament the temperament is something which is key here which is timid or pessimistic and uh, who avoids anything dangerous like harm avoidance behavior and uh, they may be prone to anxiety generalized anxiety rather than others and uh, so these are the basic risk factors so we have the medical condition in which uh, these are the medical causes now these are actually the medical causes in which there are psychological conditions that is an anxiety now these are proven like uh, abnormalities in hp axis uh, acute myocardial infarction pheochromocytomas substance intoxication and withdrawal hypoglycemia and caffeine intoxication mvps are one of the biggest causes of panic attacks and anxiety cps complex partial seizures now uh, caffeine intoxication also caffeine uh, is a is a cns stimulant basically so all these things could lead to uh, generalized anxiety disorder so then we have the signs and symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder now the symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder fluctuate you may notice better and worse times of the day now uh, even before going into the signs and symptoms i have to mention one here now if you see there is the hpa axis that is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis here comes a um, hormone called cortisol now cortisol plays a huge role that is also known as the stress hormone now when i mentioned psycho neuroimmunology what i meant is the cortisol is going to be a huge key factor here in altering the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis so what happens exactly is that when there is cortisol overload like you can uh, you can just recollect from depression there is there was non suppression of dexamethasone suppression test so uh, all these all these are like correlated because depression and anxiety they are not uh, very very far from each other so definitely cortisol is going to cause changes alterations in hp activity and it in turn can lead to generalized anxiety disorder because it's going to disturb the entire sympathetic tract that is entire sympathetic activity parasympathetic activity now parasympathetic is very much inactivated in gab that is a sympathetic overactivity so you can imagine adrenaline high adrenaline rush sort of so obviously it's a sympathetic hyperactivity always remember if if we need parasympathetic to be calm and cool so sympathetic hyperactivity is the biggest reason here so always remember psycho neuroimmunology now why i took immunology is that there are interleukins uh, related to uh, stress that is il6 and il2 so interleukin 6 and 2 are related which are actually increased that is uh, this uh, looks like a, an immunogenic response that um, there is the compromise of immune system it's not like actual compromise there is suppression basically it's not, it's it's not even like you know going to be like a full suppression but it's going to be definitely low low immunity and people may have other opportunistic infections as well if it is going to be for a longer time that is 6 months or more or 1 year or more and that is the reason during exam time we get stressed and sometimes we catch all sorts of infections and cold and fever and stress related gi disturbances if you can remember so all these root down to psycho neuro immunology and here we have signs and symptoms now let's go to the signs and symptoms that is most people with gab experience a combination of a number of the following that is emotional behavioral and physical so emotional will be constant worries running in the head 
and feeling like your anxiety is uncontrollable there's nothing you can stop you can do to stop worrying intrusive thoughts about things that make you anxious you try to avoid thinking about them but you can't basically it's it's basically excessive uncontrollable it's not like uncontrollable like an obsession here you can control but it's it's more like a um, like a persistent worry and uh, an inability to tolerate uncertainty you need to know what's going to happen in the future a pervasive feeling of apprehension or dread basically the apprehension is the key to anxiety it's heights of fear it's just not normal fear it's going to be a heightened fear the the peak is panic attack so it's like mountains right like you know a small mountain and then a large mountain and then there is the mount the peak the the one with the tallest peak so that would be the panic attack and the one with the smaller peak or uh, just uh, smaller than the big mountain would be a uh, anxiety because the smaller ones are continuous and they run a lot now the large ones are very small uh, very less in number and they 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 extremely peak so here we have the comparison of small mountains to anxiety and the peak ones to panic attack so what do i mean is that because the the fear that is the apprehension is the highest in panic attack like it's an extreme state of fear which persists only for a short time it's not for long time now that is the difference between generalized anxiety disorder and panic disorder now it's only for a short time here it's for a longer time that is 6 months or more okay so this is actually dangerous than the panic attacks or panic disorder so behavioral symptoms if you see inability to relax enjoy quiet time or be by yourself difficulty concentrating or focusing on things and putting things off because you feel overwhelmed avoiding situations that make you anxious now uh, you have these um, uh, symptoms because uh, these are all behavior now what happens to your behavior because of your emotions now you cannot sit back and enjoy a movie if your mind is constantly on the go like you you will be you will not be able to relax and enjoy right there will be difficulty in con- you cannot study how can you sit and study when your mind is continuously preoccupied with something and there is something like you know a train of thoughts running so it's very difficult putting things off because you feel overwhelmed like there's always like a feeling of uh, you know overwhelming like what's happening or uh, here and there and like you know avoiding situations that make you anxious now this is one important thing there are situations that can make you anxious and this this comes to your personality that is harm avoidance behavior now physical symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder are feeling tense that is now we are coming to the body first we were in the mind then we were in the behavior like overall behavior because of the emotion behavior cognition and then now we are coming to the body itself so in the body what do we feel the feeling of tense like you know the body is not relaxed like you know that's why one of the biggest management is pro- progressive muscle relaxation relaxing each and every muscle of the body from head to toe from forehead to the uh, small muscles of the feet as well so feeling tense muscle tightness and body aches having trouble falling asleep they can they can't sleep just they just can't sleep and staying asleep because your mind won't quit and feeling edgy restless or jumpy you know like uh, there are nights when you don't just sleep and then you feel like really edgy and then your body is really hot and you know exam time so that is how you can correlate stomach problems nausea because the entire uh, system sympathetic activity is so overwhelmed actually that word can be used here as well it's so overwhelmed 
with all those inputs and it doesn't know what to do so definitely manifesting in the body so muscle ache muscle tension or muscle ache then you have the feeling edgy restlessness jumpy stomach problems like gi problems like nausea diarrhea then we have the icd 10 criteria this is f41.1 for children it may be a different criteria a period of at least 6 months okay with prominent tension and worry and feelings of apprehension about everyday events and problems at least four symptoms out of the following list of items must be present out of which at least one from items 1 to 4 now autonomic arousal symptoms these are palpitations or pounding heart or accelerated heart sweating trembling or shaking dry mouth not due to any medication symptoms concerning chest and abdomen difficulty in breathing feeling of choking chest pain or discomfort nausea or abdominal distress now symptoms concerning brain and mind these are feeling dizzy unsteady faint or light hearted feelings of that the objects are unreal and this is derealization depersonalization fear of losing control fear of dying general symptoms of the hot flushes or cold chills numbness or tingling sensation symptoms of tension that is muscle now all this 13 were of panic attacks now we are continuing to symptoms of tension that is muscle tension or aches pains restlessness and inability to relax feeling keyed up or on edge or mental tension the sensation of lump in the throat or difficulty with the following other non specific now these are the non specific exaggerated response to minor surprises or being startled like you know they are so easily startled difficulty in concentration or mind going blank because of worrying or anxiety persistent irritability now irritability is one such feature it shouldn't be confused with mania because this irritability also can be throughout the day it can mimic like mild mania but it is definitely not going to be associated with other manic features so it's going to be persistent irritability difficulty getting to sleep because of worrying now difference between normal worry and gad a normal worry your worry doesn't get in the way of your daily activities and responsibilities but in generalized anxiety disorder your worrying significantly disrupts your job activities or social life and your uh, in normal worry you are able to control your worrying in gad your worrying is uncontrollable you cannot control in normal worry your worries while your worries while unpleasant doesn't cause any significant distress your these are extremely upsetting gad it's extremely upsetting it's extremely stressful your worries are limited to a specific small number of realistic concerns here your worry about all sorts of things tend to expect the worst it's just pessimism at the height and here your bouts of worrying last for only a short period of time here it's minimum of 6 months okay so this is a normal worry and this is gad now we've all been through normal worry now apply with this have you ever been in a gad state okay so diagnostic criteria for gad is like how to diagnose now do a physical exam Signs that your anxiety might be linked to an underlying medical condition. Now we have seen a patient who had NBP and who had a panic attack, and also there was persistent anxiety. So we almost missed the NBP. We just luckily went for a echo, and then uh, after six months of being with the patient, we found out that it was a mitral valve prolapse. So always remember to look for the underlying medical condition. Do blood. test urine test and if any medical condition suspected go ahead and treat that use psychological questionnaires to help determine the diagnosis we can also use um, ham d and ham a ham a is for hamilton anxiety scale now dsm 5 is only excessive worries similar uh, about several events or activities most of the days of the week for at least 6 months difficulty controlling your feelings of worry 
anxiety or worry that causes you significant distress or interferes with your daily life and then at least three of the following symptoms in adults and one of the following is in children restlessness fatigue trouble concentrating irritability muscle tension or sleep problems anxiety that isn't related to another medical health condition such as panic attacks or ptsd or substance abuse or another medical condition now gad is often occurs along with mental health problems some disorders that are comorbidities you can see phobias panic disorder panic disorder most common then we have depression another common and substance abuse the next common ptsd the fourth most common and then comes phobia actually we cannot stay here in percentage because phobia is anxiety basically in a heightened form so treatment we have uh, pharmacotherapy and we have psychotherapy in pharmacotherapy we also it is also known as the talk therapy so we uh, we start on cognitive behavioral therapy uh, here we have different types of cognitive behavior therapy now we don't immediately start on medications if the person is having mild cad mild to moderate so it it's better to go for cbt and try it out and if the person is real person is really having physical symptoms then it's definitely an indication to start with medications pharmacotherapy so here what are the pharmacotherapy first we'll look into the pharmacotherapy then we'll go into the cbt now the drugs used for gad will be benzodiazepines buspirone alpidem is an anxiolytic drug from the imidazopyridine group family related to more well known sleeping medication zolpidem so alpidem is like zolpidem so buspirone and then tricyclic or beta adrenergic anti and uh, antigens that is propranolol so here we have the medications that is antidepressant acetylopram and sertraline are widely used that is uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors acetylopram the starting dose can be 5 mg as low as 5 mg and go up to 20 mg it is usually paired with a uh, benzodiazepine like clonazepam and clonazepam can be taken half sos on a basis of um panic attack if the panic attacks are too too much and sertraline is an excellent option like we can start with 25 mg and we can go to even 200 mg now sertraline has got really good uh, effects on anxiety it's most preferred than even the talin that is acetylopram and in uh, tcas we have uh, amitriptyline which is an excellent anti anxiety is got an excellent anti anxiety property because it's a tricyclic and if a person is somatizing on this headache and sleep disturbance it's excellent 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 drug so uh, it's better to go for a uh, you know a drug which is basically suitable for that particular person we have to customize here we cannot just keep a formula and go go like that we cannot follow exact guidelines because some people have a different comorbidity the other may have a different comorbidity by comorbidity i mean panic disorder anxiety and depression anxiety and uh, uh, alcohol induced anxiety we can't put the person on um, you know uh, you know benzodiazepine exclusively on a person who is having alcohol induced anxiety we need something like a antidepressant proper antidepressant like is sari so tralin would do a great job in alcohol dependence so the dosage as i mentioned it's 5 mg to 10 20 for estelopram so tralin will be 25 to 200 and tca is again 25 to 200 so that this is a plan now how are we going to plan it now uh, the same may be used as an objective in which in which the client is able to recognize the signs of escalating anxiety is able to intervene so that anxiety does not reach a panic level is able to discuss long term plan to prevent panic anxiety when stressful situation occurs practice techniques of relaxation daily so you know this is how we plan actually 
now uh, whenever patient comes to our clinic and all we we always give them a strategy like a plan like what is the what is the plan now so uh, we we divide it into psychotherapeutic plan and a pharmacological now uh, in psychotherapeutic plans we have lots of lots of options for them we have alternative medicine we have we have cbts we have uh, supportive workup we have so much now in pharmacotherapy some people voluntarily ask for uh, a psychotherapy so in that case they are uh, they are very much willing like you can see they are able to recognize the signs of escalating anxiety so which is in our favor now uh, uh even this kind of person who engages who voluntarily like we have lots of patients who already know yoga now these people when they develop gab actually it's easier for them to treat with their own talent or with their own skill maybe that is yoga uh with pranayam so uh, the person who engages in physical exercise three times a week or performs activity daily living independently express satisfaction for independent functioning is able to maintain anxiety at manageable level without use of medication is able to participate in a decision making thereby maintaining control over life situation verbalized acceptance of life situation over with he or she has no control so we have to instruct the client following anxiety reducing strategies now this is all a part of non pharmacological treatment so it is progressive relaxation technique in the first mindfulness based meditation slow deep breathing exercise focusing on single object in the room and listening of smooth music soothing music and relaxation tapes visual imagery or natural related dvd production now progressive muscle relaxation is what i was talking about relaxing each and every muscle of the body starting from the forehead starting now how do we do that now first it is contraction and then it's relaxation first it's contraction and then it's relaxation it even goes to the periorbicular muscles periocular muscles and then it goes to the nose and then it goes to the cheeks that is the buccinator and temporalis and then goes to the neck you contract your uh, torticollis and then you relax it and then it comes to the trapezius and then the rhomboid and all the all the shoulder muscles and then the chest muscles and the intercostals everything is made to, you know you bring the awareness to that particular muscle you bring the concentration to that particular muscle and you relax it now that is how progressive muscle relaxation works now you contract it and then you relax it now that's when they will realize that muscle was already contracted now many people are not aware that that muscle is usually relaxed they might think but it may not be relaxed at all in the first place so that is where progressive muscle relaxation is going to do wonders and then we have mindfulness based meditation mindfulness is like we said a person with high psychological acceptance of the present condition that that person cannot do anything and uh, it is basically reduction of self criticism while observing and accepting the thoughts during the meditation process now that is mindfulness and we have slow deep breathing exercises it's like regular pranayams we can do and uh, focusing on a single object in a room like it's just to increase the concentration and listening to this is music therapy basically and visual imagery is one such um coming up uh, techniques where uh, the person is uh, just asked to imagine themselves it's actually a part of hypnotherapy as well so cognitive hypnotherapy is also very very great um technique that we are uh, utilizing these days cognitive hypnotherapy where we restructure the cognition while in hypnotherapy 
also assist the client in gaining control of overwhelming feelings and impulses through brief direct verbal interactions and visual interactions executed at appropriate intervals will reduce or manage clients anxious feelings or impulses help the client structure the environment so that it is less noisy a less stimulating environment creates a calming stress free atmosphere assess the presence and degree of depression and suicidal ideation in all clients with anxiety and related disorders a thorough assessment results in early intervention that will possibly prevent self harm now this has to be mentioned because suicide and depression are so common in anxiety because patient is always feeling on the go and edgy we don't know like what might happen there could be an impulsive suicidal act or a deliberate self harm as well so it's very very important to basically uh, train them and also to to make them aware of the impulses and to call for help administer anxiolytic medication at least stress as the least restrictive measure help the client understand the importance of medication and to take it as prescribed medication is an effective addition to other psychological or therapeutic intervention so these are my references and uh, thank you very much worrying is a waste of time it doesn't change anything it messes with your mind and steals your happiness thank you very much thank you